So when I took my first step, you know, when I was almost getting into Tibet, um, leaving India, entering Tibet, and nobody inside. You know, there was no uh, barbed wire border. There's no um, line marked with uh, whitewash, or there's no fence. There's no army soldier guarding the border. It was just a flat no man's land. Mm -hmm. Indians far behind, Chinese armies way ahead, nobody in sight. And I was not sure, am I really in Tibet now? <laughs> <laughs> I may be, but not yet. <laughs> so my concern was I have to be in inside. I have to make sure that I'm not arrested by Indian troops. Mm -hmm. And I kept on walking. It was just a huge uh, dry grassland and nobody in sight. For, for several kilometers, nobody in sight. This is this uh, Dumse uh, border um, on the Kakshung area of uh, uh, Ladakh Tibet border. Um, and this is where the River Indus floats. River Indus gets completely frozen <coughs> in winter for four months. And that's time when people can walk over the river, go into Tibet. And that's when the border from India shifts almost about five to six kilometers inside to Tibet. And in summer when the river uh, melts, when there is a river huge and flooding, then the border moves this side to India. Then Indians cannot cross. I mean, Tibetans in India, they cannot cross. So the border moves, the, it's just the river that marks the border, whether it's frozen or when it's flooded. It's a very interesting kind of a concept of border. Um, so when I first entered Tibet, I felt, when I was kind of telling myself, I am now safely in Tibet, I'm surely in Tibet. I was exhilarated. I just went mad like a kid, you know, I was carrying a small bag and uh, my, my bedding. I threw them out and, you know, was just going wild.